What's up, everybody? Welcome. Man, my voice is almost gone. It's been a crazy busy week uh, being at GDC and uh, demoing the game and interviews and exploring the expo, seeing other awesome, great indie games. Man, I'm really stoked. It's been an awesome week. So inspiring. I learned a lot about how things really work. So, but anyways, um, I'm excited to be kind of done with that and just moving into like a little bit back, you know, to the phase of working on the game. And then next weekend will be PAX East, so I'll be gone again a bit. So, um, let's jump right into it. I want to make the bomb animation way cooler today. So I've already started it off. I've got some smoke. That helps a lot. And now I'm going to add a little ring animation that expands outward. So... Let's do this. <clears throat> okay, I was taking the... Where was that? Yeah, I was in here. I was taking the this little energy wave animation. Oh, here it is. How do we get down to there? All right. And I had a NIMS energy wave. Okay, oh, and I just added color to that. All right, so basically I'm taking this chunk of code here and I'm making it a function I can use in other places. This is from the blink animation or the blink item. This is going to be an F dot position. All right. Z minus four. Oh, it needs a Z too. I wonder why that's not showing up as an error. Hmm. Oh, there, there it goes. Well, what's up, Kavani? How you doing? So either I need to pass in a Z or calculate a Z. I think I just calculate a Z. Let's go get um, auto Z is render component. Get Z order. Given our position, oh wait, no, KZ mid, I'm pretty sure there's a couple more, fine I think, all right, what's new? Oh, that's the one, the third one. So it's offset X, Y, Z. Offset zero, X is pause dot X, pause dot Y. Minus four. Thanks, Wolfrock. Thanks, Galaxy 5000. Duration, we got a scaling up to a certain scale. Oh, this needs a Z. There we go. Cool, now we got an energy wave function. And we can use it. Duration, 0 0.618. Scale, 3.0. Opacity. What was opac? Oh, I didn't even set opacity. Well, I guess this one's two fifty five then. Color is color. Should be it. Cool. So I can comment this. Oh, I gotta use it. I gotta use better Vim keys. I gotta remember this one. Percent. Percent. 
That's a good one. All right. Um, energy wave. We got it. Let's make sure it's using the opacity. Oh. Oh, yeah. Hey, thanks, Zyharders, Metrius. Let's see how it works. So what I'll use to test it out is the blink, and then once the blink works, I'll switch it over and use the bomb as well. So the bomb will just have this little tiny wave of energy that comes out of it when it when it goes off. Should be pretty cool. Right, we still got that ring. Perfect. Okay, we can delete this. Oh yeah, it's a never ending cycle. So we want to go to mood explode. I think we just want a color being white. Unless, what are these other ones? Explosion oval, there's no color. Nice, that look good. But I want it to be a little higher up. So we'll add a little bit to it. Oh, I think I didn't turn off 60. Ah. That's a little high. Thank <laughs> you. 
Hmm. What's up, Jake? How's it going, man? Let's see if it, it looks cooler if it, maybe that's a little longer. Hmm. Maybe if it started with less opacity, this would look good that way. Teague, what's new, man? Okay, let's get to the pixel art part now. All right, cool. We got an energy wave function. Where's my... It's pixel art time. All right, this old bomb animation is so old. Needs to be updated. Excited about this. All right, I think it's called Explode, maybe. <laughs> Finding that one piece of art you did way back when. What the hell is going on? Hmm. I'll just find it the old fashioned way. Nothing. Maybe it's called bomb.
Hmm, yeah, it's not here. I'll find it. I think it's here called explode. Oh, explosion. Yeah, there it is. Uh, yeah, they control it. How do they control their minds? You mean? I um, that's gonna be part of the story. How the Naga control their minds? So. Don't worry about it right now. It'll be, um, I'll make that clearer in the next text. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, they bore into the minds of their prey. They chew. They eat. Wait, was that shadow? Oh, there it is. No, uh, no, they, they, there are these, I don't want to really, uh, I don't want to spoil this for anybody. So if anybody's listening and you, know, you care about the plot for Songbringer, this is a spoiler alert. Oh. What? If they take mine under, there's no host anymore? Well, I guess it's, that's just a technicality. Yeah, I guess if like, if like, you know, if they eat their way into someone else's mind and then they're not considered the host anymore. Wow. Wow, that's really great. Dang. This is a giant image. Oh, this is actually the image. Yeah, wow, this is crazy. Okay, so there's this delay at the beginning and then it goes boom. It doesn't look very 3D, so I'm going to take this and make it just look more 3D. Wow.
Yeah. Oh, oh. oh it's so wide. All right, so I'm going to reform this whole smoke cloud using smaller, I'm going to try using smaller spheres at first. Liar Thief! What's up, Thief? How you been, Liar Thief? What you doing, man? Oh, it was great. Yeah, I man, it was so good. Yeah, GDC was it's like a, a whirlwind of awesome, like I said the other day. It's like so much going on. Um, yesterday was really my favorite day because I got to I'd go explore. Oh, what's up, Salad? Yeah, I got to go explore like the whole expo yesterday. So I got to check out all these awesome indie games. I got to play... Um, I also got to play Rain World and Aider, and um, I just like kind of got to learn how how things really work, you know, in the in games, how you get your game out there, how like how, you know all the all the awesome indie games, they were all like they all had had like either multiple presences at that the event or they were at um they basically just were very well represented, you know. Any game that's kind of worth its worth worthy of note was there and meant and like represented somehow. Rain World was really great. Yeah. Rain World was fun. It was different than I thought it would be. You know, I was like, oh, I thought that I was under the impression that it was kind of like this big world that you could explore, like. But I mean, it, it's like it was. It was just different than I thought how mechanically the world worked. That's what I'm trying to say. It was just this, it's cool that you got these little tunnel things that you like climb through as you're, as being the slug cat, slug cat. And, um, it seemed really fun. You know, I just, I can't wait to actually play it. Cause it's such a, it seems like so much of a bigger game. You can't really get a, like a good impression of it in five minutes. Same thing with Aider. And Aider, I was really surprised. It's like, you really get the feeling when you're playing Aider that she's like double handing things, you know, and like the sword is really heavy and 
Um, it takes a lot of effort for her to like move and stuff. So it's kind of like, it's interesting like that. It's the game has a different feel than, than I thought it would. It, you know, kind of Aider kind of looks more like a Diablo style game and it felt more like a, uh, I mean, I don't, I don't really, can't really think of a really great example of like a, a game that has energy where your character actually tires and stuff like that in the same way that they're doing it. It's interesting. It's a really interesting concept. I can't wait to actually play Aider and Rain World some more. But I was at the award ceremony too. That was really interesting. Oh, Aider? You gotta hear of Aider. Yeah, man. Check it out. If you're into like this sort of game. Yeah, and then, oh, the award ceremony was really interesting too because like I got to see, um, it was funny, Tim Schafer was hosting it for the second half. He was funny as hell. And like it was cool to see them like recognize these industry veterans, or not, not industry veterans, I, mean, I guess that is the word, veteran. They were just like these people that have been making games for over 30 years, like Tim Sweeney, who made ZZT. I didn't know Tim Sweeney also made the Unreal Engine. I was like, what? Tim Sweeney made one of my favorite games as a child. And he's, you know, yeah, yeah, right. It looks it, it looks like it's it, it will play exactly like a Diablo game, but Aider feels a lot different because it's got this whole mechanic of your how many how much action you can take you know yeah and they recognized another veteran dude that was like what was his name again he made um he made prince of persia i forget his name but he he actually did a little talk and so did tim sweeney so it was cool seeing them like you, you get to see them talk for like a couple minutes each during the award ceremony and then lots of indie games run, won all these awards during the first half of the ceremony. So like Hyper Light Drifter won awards. Um, Inside, Inside won some awards. Um, and like all these other great indies. Uh, pretty sure um, Stardew Valley won some awards too. I can't remember exactly. I got to the I got to that bit a little bit late, so I didn't really get to see all of it from the beginning. But other than that, it was a really, really great. Yeah, definitely. Hyperlight Drifter deserved those awards. Yeah. I got to go back and watch it again because I only saw one of the awards they they won, but I'm pretty sure they won multiple awards. Uh, I don't know. I don't think they've announced a release date for Aider. I could be wrong about that. I, have, I don't have any idea. Um, but yeah, it was really cool. Um, there was a lot of hype about Nintendo releasing the Switch. Um, I haven't tried it yet. I would love to, love to get some people's thoughts. Has anybody, has anybody ordered a Switch or played the Switch yet? Um, also it was really great, like, doing all these, um, these events, like, yeah, yeah, I had my, exactly, I had my game there to play. So I was at this event called The Mix, which was really nice on Monday night. And it, um, it was an indie thing. Um, so all the games at the, at the mix were all indies and they had all these press people coming in and checking out the, checking out the games. Um, so it was mostly just press and game developers, which is really interesting. And it was jam packed. There were so many people there. And so I got to demo, um, Songbringer there on Monday night. For a few hours and then I was one of the showcase developers there so um, I got to be on the live stream with Danny O'Dwyer and talk about the game and stuff and Danny O'Dwyer is a really cool guy I really respect what he's doing and how he's running no clip and doing these documentaries funded by patron uh, patrons so cool rather than being funded by ads and all the other Oh, the response was really, really great. I also got to be at this whole whole day event 
with Microsoft called ID at Xbox, or is it, no, it's called The Loft, but it was thrown by ID at Xbox, and that was really great, demoing the game on Xbox, so Double Eleven got, got that working, they got the Xbox version all going and got this all set up, so I got to be at this event, it was really great, such a great rad event, I'm so glad to have been a part, I mean really, really lucky, and I feel really lucky and humbled to have been a part of those two like noteworthy events to be at. I was I was like, wow, I feel humbled to be here. This is cool. Mm. Oh yeah. Yeah, 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 lots. And then I also got to do some interviews and uh, meet with some other press. It was really, really great. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's the exact same thing. Yeah. Thanks, Slider Thief. What's up, Linux? Game Consortium? Yeah, totally. Indie devs were rad. Oh, another cool thing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Another really cool thing at GDC was this retro section. So it was, um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, they had, um, like Pong and all, all these old arcade games and Commodore 64 games and old Nintendo games. That was rad. I was like, yeah, it's the retro section. And then, of course, the other rad part about GDC is there's just tons of talks. There's talks going on like all the time. I didn't get to check out any talks because like the one I wanted to check out was it did wasn't at the right time. Yeah, they did. They had a C64. I was like, yes. So rad. That was fun. <clears throat> Quest for Tires, what's that? Oh, sweet. I, the, the, okay, so when I was at the retro thing, the Commodore wasn't playing a game at that point. They were like either booting it up or doing something. And I was like, eh, I, I, didn't, get a, I didn't get to play their Commodore 64 at all. Oh, right. Yes, I did, Lighter Thief. I did see this. Um, is this the article from The Verge? Oh, okay. This is a Kotaku art article. I got to check this one out, too. But The Verge did an article on this, too. Yeah. It was really, it was being really hyped there at GDC. There's, I mean, everybody's stoked about playing Zelda. I'm so glad that they're going back to, it sounds like they're going back to that more 8-bit style, which is, I mean, that feeling that you got when you played the original Zelda, which is a lot, a lot of the reason why I created Songbringer. I'm like, I want something that feels like the first Zelda, and now they're going back to it as, as Nintendo, and they're doing it really 3D and awesome. Like, I've heard this, I've heard Breath of the Wild is freaking amazing. I know, they could, they could totally release th this old 8-bit style. As a game. Uh. Ta, oh, check this out. <laughs> You're like a caveman. Yeah. Yeah, right? It is, a, it is a shame. Maybe they'll change. Maybe they'll change soon. They'll realize that, oh, people love that. The way we were making games back in the day. Yeah, that was a good one. It was a good game.
So what I'll make it here is like a little texture. Oops. Okay, so I'm just going to combine all this together into one layer so it can be a texture on other layers. Alright, so now let me draw something, something new. I'm gonna draw this explosion animation in more of a 3D look. Cloudy with a chance of meatballs? What's up, Fair Logics? <laughs> nice, Teak. That's funny.
Okay, so compared to how it was before, that's what it was before. This is what it is like now. It looks more like a tree, but it's definitely more 3D. Hmm. All right, Ladder Thief, see you, man. Mm, all right. I think I'm going to leave this texturing till last. Yeah, I'm just going to draw the outlines first. Get those straight. How long have I done pixel art prior to Songbringer? Um, about a year.
There we go. Now this is starting to look a lot more 3D.
All right, this is already looking a lot better. In fact, let's see how this is looking. Whoa. Ah. All right, T. Good night, man. Yeah, yeah. All right, I want to move that file. It's in the wrong folder right now. It's in shadow. <clears throat> What's up, Cougar Rigo? Cool. So now we got a, a little bit more of a 3D looking thing. Let's uh, still some work left to do. Yeah, there's definitely a few. Yeah. Ah, thanks, man. I'm glad you watched that. <clears throat> yeah, lots of people are really excited. I got a I got a show Songbringer to a lot of people at GDC, and a lot of different. Um, you know, like other developers, people of the press, stuff like that. It was really good to get Songbringer, the word out there about Songbringer. I'm really thankful to Double Eleven for for um, making that all happen. You know, it's nice being a solo developer that has some help. You know, with stuff. It's really great because I I wouldn't be able to get myself at PAX East all by myself. No way. I wouldn't be able to get myself on Xbox or PlayStation without their help. And they're they're awesome. I'm really glad to be working with them. Okay, let's see how this looks. Want to run it and the explosion should look a little more 3D now. <laughs> Oh, okay. Yeah, it looks more three D, I guess. That's um that's the publisher I'm working with to get to get the game on PlayStation and Xbox. Double eleven.
Yeah. Okay, I want to see what it would look like with this frame here and this texture. It's kind of cheesy looking at first here, but let's see if it was like really, it was almost that dark. Hold on. Yeah, whatever. Okay. What does this look like with that frame kind of like textured like that? In fact, maybe it should be more textured. How about all the way textured? Oh, I don't even need to open. Oh yeah, what is that? Oh, that does look good. Dang, because it's additive light. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I remember the feeling of when I first made this explosion animation. I was very frustrated. I couldn't really get it right either. It's kind of tricky, right? There's a lot of like, you know, getting this like, this bit as the explosion like plumes out. It's kind of tricky. But so I just, I determined that this actually looks pretty good like that, like that with um, these balls and stuff. These balls look great. Except for this middle part here. What do I do about that? Yeah, hopefully. Okay, let's make this one also. Make a texture for this one.
All right, there we got another little texturing layer done. In fact, I think I'm going to copy all this or put it all in a group so I can easily duplicate this next time. All right. Maybe if I just make this texture darker, or this bit darker, it'll work. Look all right. Oh yeah, here we go. Compress those colors. Okay, let's see that. All right, that's good. It looks kind of dark here when in, in the pixel art, but this is a additive lighting, so the dark parts just get less light. So that's why it looks a lot different in the game. I'm pretty happy with this so far. Let's see in the game. Did that run it? Oh, it just doesn't run it yet. Let's fix that right now. I'm optimizing my shortcuts here and there. One of these commands I've got is the smart run. 
It just knows how to run. Here we go. Here's where it renders the video, but I want it to, oh, it's supposed to run Xcode. Wonder what happened there. Oh, Xcode run. Oh. Otherwise, we want to activate Xcode. Or, wait. Actually, we just want to run in Xcode, or run in Vim no matter what. Else. Try that. All right, so from here, my control or command R. Yeah, nice. Ha! <laughs> Such a cool shortcut. There's like, there was one frame in there I thought could be better. It jumps from here to there too fast. Yeah, both those. I make music uh, with Ableton and Massive and Befixer. Sound effects, I mean, with Befixer. But yeah, I make the music in Ableton and um, Massive.
Okay, now the animation too needs to be a few frames further south. But I think this animation is done. That was cool. Where does it do that explosion? Separate explosion anime. I think it's up here. Oh, wait, that's it. Past it. There it is. Uh, oh. So it's position. So much better. Cool. That also that um, the little energy wave can go just like two pixels shorter. One more. Yeah, that was right on. That, ex that energy wave that came out was centered right at the, the point of the bomb. We got this little smoke. Yeah, I love it. It's turning out cool. Let's see it one more time, and then that's going to be it for today's stream. could go a little faster just 
separate an M, get an M. Yeah, so that's going to be bomb. Damn. Bomb. So defaults are a delay of a tenth of a second. Let's try more like a 7.07. Why is this animation so slow? Hmm, that was a little bit faster pace. Could add a few, like another frame to it where this like fades out more. Now that I checked it in, I can go delete all the layers I'm not using. Which ought to be pretty satisfying. Alright, Kukuriku. See you, man.
All right, so both of these last frames, I'm gonna keep the frame before, but make it almost transparent. It's kind of cool, 15%. Boom, yeah, that's cool. All right, this is almost finished. I'm gonna be done with the stream here. Got this bomb animation looking better. I'm excited. Next I'll be working on some other cool stuff tonight too. I got lots of fun things I'm working on right now. Kind of like, sometimes bugs are really hard and they take forever. So it's nice to, once, once you fix all those bugs and stuff to go back and just have a nice fun day where there's no bugs, no critical things to worry about. Uh, no, there's not a single a single moment of free time during GDC week. I didn't even have time to like do the normal things I do, like watch a little bit of TV before bed. It was crazy, crazy busy. Quite a quite a lot of the nights I only got like four hours of sleep. Not quite a lot, sorry, like two nights, whatever. It felt like all the nights, you know. But yeah, it was a good time. So that's, yeah, it was that uh, busy. Yeah. I mean, you know, one event ended at midnight the night before, and then I got to be back in the city at like early in the morning the next day, which means I, you know, yeah, you get it. You get it. <laughs> but anyways, I got to run. I'm going to get some dinner here. Relax. Have a nice Friday night, my lady. So hope you're having a good time too, Salad. Good luck with everything. We'll catch up more 
the next stream. So cheers, everybody. Thanks a lot for watching. Appreciate you all. And um, I'll be doing something cool next time, I promise. <laughs> Later.